I'd like to show you something very helpful uh, to help correct this forward posture situation where you're, it's not the whole body going forward, but your neck is going past this midline right here. Let me, let me show you something on the spine right here. If you can see this right here. So whether you're sitting at your desk all day, creating this postural problem, or if it came from an old injury, which I'm gonna talk about, your head is anywhere between 12 and 15 to 17 pounds. It's like a bowling ball. And it's resting on this little spine. So every inch it goes forward, it adds a tremendous amount of tension in the back part through here. Now we have this connection between the back of your skull called the occiput and the first bone right here called the atlas, okay? And there's these really strong ligaments and tendons and you have nerves back here. Uh, you also have the brain stem that is right in this location. And that is the location of the parasympathetic nervous system, okay? Another name for the parasympathetic nervous system is rest and digest. So having a problem in this upper part of the neck can create problems with insomnia. It can create problems with dizziness, okay? Or even POTS, which is a condition where you're standing up and you're getting dizzy and you have to lay down. You're not able to handle the adaptation from lying down to standing. Uh, a lot of stiffness, a lot of constant tension in the upper neck, okay? Now, when I was in practice, I would always ask people, um, have you ever had any compression injuries to your head, whether something falling on your head or you falling from some place landing on your head? I remember when I was five years old, swinging on a swing set and I slipped off and I fell about three foot right on my head, okay? Creating a compression injury right through this area. That was the start of my neck problems and the reason I eventually went to see a chiropractor. You also have tailbone injuries, okay? So where you're falling on your butt really hard, the force will travel all the way up the spine and actually get stuck right here in the occiput, okay? So if you had a history of a tailbone injury, okay, uh, chances are you have a lot of tension and stiffness in guarding in the top part of your neck, which will pull you forward eventually. Then you have whiplash. Whether you're driving a car and get hit from behind, okay, and your neck goes back this way and forward, which you end up creating trauma on the front part of the neck right here because it's gonna overstretch, or a front end collision where your head goes forward first and you're creating micro trauma in the back part, or even from the side. Someone hits you from the side, and your head goes this way. So there's all sorts of traumatic things that can happen to your neck that tend to haunt you later in life. Or you spend eight, 10, 12 hours behind a desk, behind your computer, and your head just naturally kind of gravitates forward, okay? So the question is, what can be done for this neck situation? Well, there are three things that I would recommend you focus on. The first would be a very, very simple stretch, okay? Now, if you think about what's happening, if the head goes forward, the muscles in the front part of your neck and the upper chest are pulling you forward, okay? They're too tight compared to the back muscles because we always have this imbalance between the front part of the muscles and the back part. Now, logically, you would think if the neck is going forward, we just have to stretch it backwards, but that's not how these muscles work. A better solution would be to stretch the back part of the muscles through here, okay? Going down this way. Because what's gonna happen when you stretch all these back muscles all through here, going forward, what happens is you send a communication to the front part of the muscles, okay? And the communication is relax. So anytime you stretch a muscle, the opposing muscles will automatically relax. So we're sending relax signals to the front part, okay, when you stretch the back part. So there is this first stretch that I'm gonna recommend called the Jefferson Curl, okay? Now, this Jefferson Curl um, is usually done on kind of a gradual approach from very, very light without weights to adding weights. And a lot of athletes do this, gymnasts, weightlifters, et cetera. But what I'm gonna recommend is to do it without weights with not standing on a platform. But basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna curl your head forward as much as possible and then curl your mid back forward 
and start to touch your toes, bending your lower back. So your upper body is completely going forward. And what this is going to do, it's going to stretch the entire posterior or back part of your spine and your neck, sending signals to the front part, allowing for all these muscles in the front part to be really, really loose. So when you come out of this Jefferson curl, you're going to be able to stand up taller and it's going to feel really relaxing. Now, of course, over time, when you're more flexible, you can start adding weight and really uh, stretch, not just your hamstrings, but it's a great exercise to add flexibility and strength to your entire spine. Now, the second thing I'm gonna recommend is cervical traction, okay? You can actually purchase a traction device, uh, inexpensive one, online, maybe 50, 75, maybe $100, that will give you so much relief to your neck and help you with your posture so much, especially if you had a compression injury or even a tailbone injury in the past. And what you basically do is you hook up uh, this device to your head and you're either laying on your back and you're putting this uh, elastic bungee cord type thing on the other side of the door handle as you close the door and you can control how much traction is on your neck. You can also do this on the top of your door, pulling your head upward this way, creating uh, this separation between your occiput and your C1 through here. Realize that the ligaments through here are super, super strong. And you can actually put a lot of pressure on your neck to create this tractioning effect between the occiput and, and the first cervical vertebra. But the reason I did cervical traction in practice for 30 years, because it gave people so much relief, not just with their neck, but improving their sleep, okay? Because you're stimulating the parasympathetic nervous system. Remember, rest and digest. You're gonna allow this person to finally get into this relaxed state. And a lot of people carry so much tension right through in here. Now, there is my device that you can get that's not necessarily a traction device. It's more for pressure points that you can put in the back of your neck. And I have videos on it. It's uh, very, very relaxing. But if you've had a compression injury or a tailbone injury, you need to get a cervical traction device that can literally reverse the injury over time. And I'd recommend doing this towards the end of the day, maybe a half hour before bed for about five, maybe 10 minutes. And you're gonna find that your whole body, not just your neck, but your mid back and then your lower back are going to uh, get into this relaxed state. And it's gonna really improve your sleep because try to sleep if your neck it has constant tension. You'll also notice the range of motion, the neck pain, and maybe even your headaches will go away as well. Now, the third thing I would recommend after the stretching and the traction would be neck strengthening exercises. And you would get on all fours and you're gonna to start to do extension type exercises as well as on your back doing flexion type exercises. And I did put some links down below of how to do this because a lot of times people go to the gym and they're working their entire body but they don't actually strengthen the neck. And if you're behind the computer a lot, you can actually lose this normal curve that you should have in the neck. And you have to do things to actively um, undo that um, micro trauma. Now, I'm really curious about your past. Have you had any trauma to your neck, whether it's a compression injury, tailbone injury, or a whiplash injury? Go ahead and comment down below. And then after that, I think you should watch this next video on whiplash. Check it out. I put it right here.